How's it going, everybody? So, we're still in West Virginia. No, we're in Maryland now, right? Maryland. Uh, just outside of West Virginia. We're on our way. We're actually in Frederick right now. We're going to meet who they call Dr. Mark. This is the man that's been hooking everybody up and giving them all the stem cell stuff. I've been suffering with quite a few aches, a little bit on my brachialis with my back pressure. My elbow has been killing me. I haven't been able to drive inside like I'd like to, to be able to finish certain people off sometimes. So I'm going to fucking try it out. So here we are. We're in Frederick. I'm on my way. I'm going to go see Dr. Mark with Vitacell Biologics and we'll see if this man can hook me up and see how he makes a wild horse. Hey, how's it going everybody? So we're here with Mark, Dr. Mark. The man I was telling you guys about on the drive over with uh, Vitacell Biologics. He's the one that is going to hook me up today. So I got a few questions for you, Mark. Okay. I want to dumb it down as simply as possible. Um, I've very, got a very good memory, but it's short. Okay. So you're going to have to remind me a few little things on this. Uh, so where are we getting these stem cells from? It's a great question. So, because there's, there's a bunch of different kinds of them out there I keep hearing. So. Yep. So first, congratulations on your Thank win. You. Thank you. You rock, you kick hey, butt. This motherfucker's going back to Turkey. That's right, that's right, that's right. But first, we look forward I'm going to get myself all stem cell rebuilt, up. Rebuilt up. Rebuild this shit, right? So, so. It's, it's a great question, and we get asked it a lot. Um, it's a very specific uh, source. Um, it's literally uh, a mother who's healthy, mm -hmm. um, who's having a planned C-section delivery, um, donates her umbilical cord. Nice. Um, so mom is tested and the FDA has heavy, heavy requirements on whether a cord is good or not good. So uh, mom is healthy, umbilical cord is healthy, baby is delivered healthy, and uh, inside that umbilical cord are literally millions and millions of live stem cells. And that's, that's where they come from. And, and the beautiful part is they have the ability to become literally any cell in your body. So if you ever remember back in the day seeing uh, an egg and a sperm, when they connect to make a baby, all of a sudden one cell goes to two, to four, to eight. Mm -hmm. They do the same thing in your body. Oh, so they're gonna okay. recognize yeah, yeah. what's wrong in your body and become those cells and then assist your body in actually repairing and regenerating those cells. Hmm. Actually, actually, yeah. it's a gift from God. To be yeah, honest with yeah. you, I mean. And there's there's other types of stem cells you can get out there too, right? So, Correct. Yeah. Correct. There are different types, but honestly, um, the ones at, at our company, Vitacell Biologics, we use only umbilical cord. They are the absolute best thing that you can put in your body. Yeah. Um, I often warn people about uh, going out of country. Um, there are some fabulous clinics in other countries, but there is no FDA. Uh, regulating the source, mm. so that could get a little scary. Yeah, I would you imagine. Know? You don't here, know where you're getting it from. Here, right? we know exactly where they come from. Actually, there's a tracker ID on them, and that ID can be tracked all the way back to the mother donor at any given moment. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Nice. So, what kind of tests do they do on this mother to make sure that she's healthy? Like oh, any yeah. DNA tests or anything like yep. that to make sure that it's all going to be. Right. Yeah, they go into her health history. Um, they test for infectious diseases, sterility. Um, no one can be vaccinated. We do not accept vaccinated uh, umbilical cords. Um, Must be getting harder to find, eh? No. You know, uh, I tell you what, it's a, it's a really strict law, and it's a good one. You yeah. Know, because uh, all the uh, research that is now surfacing on vaccination. Well, we still don't even know half of the stuff that's we coming don't. out about it. And that's a whole other yeah, that's a Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's for a different podcast. We yeah. need to go to DuckDuckGo yeah. for that one, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but so the good thing is, is where you're getting them is a fabulous source. And what a lot of people don't know is um, not every umbilical cord is up to par, especially with our company. Um, when we get, let's say, 10 umbilical cords, we only really accept one or two of those 10. Mm. You know, because they have to literally be not only what the FDA requires, but our requirements are actually higher. So you are really getting the very best stem cells you could ever get. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing hearing some things around the industry. Just been doing a little bit of research myself on stem cells, and like I keep hearing that you guys are a step above everybody else. Not so much like uh, as as for effective, but actually it is the effectiveness on how well it works and. Part of the reason why it works so well is because of the 
preserve or the way that you guys preserve your stem cells without artificially preserving them it's more a natural way of preserving them so when you guys do dethaw them because everything does come frozen in order to be preserved uh, and when you guys do dethaw them you have more alive can you explain a little more to me about that yeah um, the, the stem cells are stored in liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. uh, which is close to negative 300 degrees so most people think when it's frozen it's frozen but biologically the cells are very much alive um, I can't give you all the secrets of Vitacell Biologics. You well, know, of course. It's of almost course. like Willy Wonka's giving away all the secret recipes to yeah, the chocolate yeah, factory. Yeah. But I will tell you that the way we process the, uh, the cords is it, we actually exceed the requirements by the FDA and also the American Tissue Bank Association. So when we have our lab inspected, which is an FDA regulated lab, um, when they came and inspected us, they kind of walked in our lab and said, you know, you guys, this is really overkill for what mm -hmm. you're doing. And we're like, it's not overkill. This is why our, our stem cells are literally the best. And when we thaw them out, the amount that are viable, the amount that are alive are way more than our competitive companies yeah. out there. So what are these, some of these other competitors putting into the stem cells that's, that's obviously killing them? And if it's killing them, like what kind of preservative, what would that do to your body if it's actually injected into you as well? Sure, it's a good question. Um, a lot of them are using what's called a cryopreservative, which mm -hmm. is kind of the same thing as when you go food shopping and you see food on a shelf. Um, they can stay on the shelf sometimes for years because they put preservatives in them. Which ain't natural. It's not natural. <laughs> yeah. We all know that's going to yeah. do something to you. Um, stem cells are no different. I would say most of the companies out there producing stem cells have a cryopreservative in them for shelf life. Uh, the problem is the cryopreservative, uh, it kills some of the stem cells. So when we thaw out our stem cells, let's say 99% of them are still viable and alive. Our closest competitors are maybe 50%. Yeah, and then some people. That's a pretty big number. Eh? It's a big number. It's a real big <laughs> that's number. A huge number. But the other thing that's well, even more drastic is some people have a reaction to the preservatives, mm. and that's a problem. You know, that's so uh, so the fact that we have pure stem cells and exosomes with nothing in them just zero side effects because no there is no preserves or nothing yeah. additives, right? And you brought in a great word, side effects. Yeah. Because these things come from the umbilical cord, they're called immunoprivileged cells. And that typically means that your body can't reject them. Hmm. They can go in anyone's body and become exactly what they need to become to help you. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, another question, because uh, I know a lot of us arm wrestlers are really starting to jump on the bag and wing with the stem cells because of the vigorous activity, the stress that we're putting on our bones and our tissues and our ligaments and everything else that helps. How would this affect somebody that, say, had an old injury for say 15 20 years it's really starting to bother them it's getting to the point where they feel they need surgery but nobody really wants to get themselves cut open obviously if there's sure. another way we can go about it or sure. go about getting them fixed so how how would this stuff help an old injury from mm -hmm. somebody that's say aging in their 50s sure. 60s something like that we're right? higher you know uh aside from treating you guys and a lot of we treat a ton of world-class athletes we treat the general public, yeah. you know, and most people we treat are 40 years old up to, I, the oldest person I've treated is 93. Yeah. You know, and it's just people that are regular people. They don't want surgery. They know there's less than a 50% chance that it's gonna be successful. So this is a great option for them. There's no downtime. There's no medications. Their body doesn't reject it. And, um, you know, we try, we try to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, what I love about the company and some of the people that we work with is they really care. Yeah. They care about helping people and if it means, you know, um, helping them financially, you know, whatever it's going to take. Yeah. Because this literally changes the quality of their life. Yeah, almost seems too good to be true, it, right? It, <laughs> it, you know what? Until you start yeah. seeing this, because yeah. we hear success stories all the time and we're always so happy. Yeah, I want to feel the success. We're so happy for people. <laughs> Like, so we just took yeah. care of um, somebody at the uh, the event we just came from. A few people. Yeah. All of them were world champions. And one of the guys that was there was like, uh, I don't want to say his name, but we all know him. He's, he's very well known. Yeah. He's like, uh, uh, Dr. Mark, is it supposed to work that fast? I feel something right now. Yeah. And I'm like, well, some people it does. Yeah. You know, within 24 to 48 hours. 
uh, it attacks inflammation first. So it literally gets rid of inflammation. And as soon as you take inflammation out of a joint, you already start feeling better. Yeah. But then phase two comes in where it starts to regenerate the, the damaged tissue. Hmm. So it really is, it, and again, we see it all the time. So we're excited for everybody, yeah. but it's like, all right, we hear this every single day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and it's cool because we're going to help you. You're going to tell us to somebody, and you're going to help change somebody else's life. Yeah, for and sure. that's what this is really all about. Yeah. Uh, one more thing. So, so it's able to fix older people that have had injuries for quite a long time. They've been dealing with instead of going through the surgery route. What about someone young like my daughter? She just she thought she was an ACL tour. She was uh, playing rugby. She ended up uh, slightly tearing her meniscus. Mm -hmm. um, there's a possibility in the future that she may need surgery. Right now, she's not going to need surgery, but if it doesn't heal properly, that scar tissue builds up in that meniscus tear, and say she ends up twisting the wrong way when she gets older, grab her dog or a kid running by or picking something up as it goes yep. to fall, and she twists the wrong way and that meniscus ends up fully rupturing. She needs a full recovery. How much better would this help for a young person? How young can they be for you to be able to inject this into them? You know. You can number one. You cannot get enough stem cells in you. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're born, we're born with millions of them. Uh, by the time they're your daughter's age, they're literally drop off the shelf. Yeah. There's not a lot left, and they they replicate. And they've been used so many times that they start to lose their effectiveness, which is why people in their 20s on up slowly their health changes that's, and we don't that's why it. I was able to pull so much more yeah. when I was 25 and now that's that right. I'm 40 I need a couple days that's rest right. in between that's right, right. <laughs> we don't recover the way no. we used to now the cool thing is your daughter's young she's gonna heal quickly mm -hmm. um, so she's the perfect age to have this done because almost like a tear in your genes that tear will slowly get bigger and yeah. bigger to where it's completely torn and then she's gonna definitely need surgery if we can get to her now, why it's a partial tear, it'll uh, it'll heal the tear, but it'll also prevent her from more serious injuries. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Did you hear that, Jess? All right. We're going to help you out, too. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah. I think we should Today cut should the interview. Do. We should get right to the chase, get her done. We'll go up to the lab. You can go ahead, give me my injections, and maybe we'll have a little discussion, see how I feel afterwards. Cool. So, awesome. All right, man. Okay, so we've got all my injections done. Uh, I end up going with my brachialis here, just on the outside, it's been bothering me. And then I did my elbow on the inside yep. because of my side pressure. Hasn't been worth a fuck for the last 10 years. <laughs> so we're gonna see what this is gonna do. Uh, it, honestly, I was thinking a little bit more pain. I was, uh, I was thinking it was gonna pinch a little more. Uh, I didn't really feel much. And a freeze just slightly a little bit, and yeah, we're very, very painless. Um, you did great for someone that me that mm -hmm. just got it done. Um, I'm obviously I want to start feeling stronger. I want to start getting back to the gym. I want to start pushing myself now. How long should I wait before I start lifting? Uh, if I do start lifting, should I start off going light? Should I start going heavy? Where should I go from here? Can I just? run back to the fucking table like yeah. Devin does right after well, and he's, start he's, hitting he's it. He's a whole different, I think he's from another planet. Yeah, he's not from uh, here. But so. no, typically if you if that was a tear, partial tear or, or close to a complete tear, I would have you not do anything for at least 30 days. Okay. Um, the fact that um, you're coming off a weekend where you pulled a lot, um, for the next at least week to two weeks, just go light, 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 light more reps, uh, get the blood circulating, uh, like that range of motion, not heavy yet, because what they're gonna do now is they're gonna start healing all the micro tears that are in your muscle, which all you guys have a lot of. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, just take it so, easy for a while. So by healing the micro tears, so every time like a guy works out, I just had a big weekend, I've got a bunch of little tears in my muscles, and then you eat all your protein and everything throughout the week, and that slowly builds in. So what will happen to me if, if I just start hitting her hard right away before I let the stem cells to heal all the little micro tells I've created over the weekend. Right, uh, you, you'll just slightly re-tear them. You know, so just like we were speaking, uh, you're, when you have a tear, it'll tear like this, the fibers. The stem cells get in there and they start to form the tears back together like this. So if you hit it too hard too soon, you're just gonna keep re-tearing it. The stem cells will put them back together. Yeah. So we don't want that. We want it to heal 
all this come complete. It's called scaffolding, where the muscles actually come together again. And they literally have the ability to become stronger than they were before. So it's actually by resting and just going lightweight, just the blood flow, just to get everything mm -hmm. moving and letting all the micro tears fully heal before you mm -hmm. start ripping the shit out of them again. Yep. And it's actually gonna help build a better foundation sure, for the future sure. for when I go to start building yep. my shit up again. And this is very hard for not only you, but for all the guys out there that do this, cause it's impossible to keep you out of the gym. Right, you know? so. But uh, <laughs> honestly, to get the optimal results, you really need to let this just do its own magic, let it heal, and then uh, you'll know because mm -hmm. you're going to start calling me saying, I feel so great, man. Can I start going heavy? Wait another week. You know? oh, yeah. So typically those first 30 days are pretty crucial of rest and light, light lifting. Okay. After so I'm, that, you I'm can still going to do my table time, but the red deer guys, we're not hitting. We're just going to be going light. You got to take it easy on them so weeks, you don't eh? wreck my good work. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I don't really know what else to say besides I just got to be patient for the next yep. couple of weeks to a month. and. Yep. before we start going hard and then yeah. yeah and we'll be chatting you soon see when we can get my daughter down I'll maybe get her good missness done yep. and uh, yeah maybe you can meet the rest of the family and That'd be great. go from there cool man awesome right on thanks a lot Mark. you're welcome so you're welcome my pleasure buy to sell you might want to check them out i'll add a link below uh where you can go check out do any research or anything on them i suggest do research before you go to get any stem cells or anything done but uh, if you just want to get it done by, you know it's a good source, talk to Dr. Mark, so. Here we are an hour before about to hop on the plane. Uh, I figured we'd stop by this little park, grab ourselves some chocolate milkshakes. Uh, we're just gonna relax. It's been about two hours since I've gotten my shot. And I don't really know what the fuck I'd say. It's kind of weird because I had some little tweaks and aches and pains in my brachialis just from competing this weekend it resurfaced and already we're only looking at what a couple hours two hours and i'm already like it's already starting to feel better already so i don't really fucking know but i'll keep you guys updated on this shit as we keep going so i'll get back to canada i'm gonna get to do a good little review on how i thought of everything and what i felt at the tournament and the hospitality that the man travis travis page showed so yeah we'll talk to you guys all soon see you later